I have in front of me here an air cooler, an AMD 7950X3D, and a water cooler AIO. Uh, this is arguably the best value air cooler you can get on the market, the Deepcool AK620. Uh, it's like of the white version. However, I wanted to do a comparison in this video between an air cooler, a really good but budget air cooler, to a really good but budget water cooler and just basically see the difference. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here's a quick look at the test rig here. I have a glass panel that I'm gonna put on. This is the Fractal Pop Air uh, case here. So I have a the case, the fan that came with it, a white fan, RGB, uh, 120 millimeter. I have a 120 millimeter fan on the top here. Uh, also a Fractal that came with it here. In the front here, I have uh, two 140 millimeter um, Arctic fans here. I have a 4090 in there. Uh, I have also Arc GPUs, but I decided to put in a hot, CP hot GPU rather than a relatively cool GPU. So I'm gonna test the GPU temps and the CPU temps, not just that. And that's the Gigabyte 4090 OC or whatever. So, okay, so I have it just as it's running. So you can see here, the two fans are pulling in here. Uh, obviously the air goes that way. And this is an exhaust up here. So I have exhaust out, exhaust out, uh, dual fan in, and that's really the only intake and then whatever. Um, can passively come into the case. So. Here's a look at the setup with the AIO or water cooler installed. I decided to go with top fans, you basically exhaust, which might slightly increase the temperature of the CPU overall. Um, however, it will keep the GPU a little bit cooler. Um, considering I have very large intake, 140 millimeter fans, two of them on the front, I figured that this is probably the best way to go in terms of kind of balancing the system out overall. And just a bit of a disclaimer here, um, I did decide to install the low fan noise adapters with the AIO. When I did my test, you'll see on the first slide, the overall dB or the overall dB measurement or noise level was kind of absurd with the uh, AIO without the low fan noise adapter. It was actually driving me crazy. Um, you will see decrease in the cooling performance overall as a result. However, it's more of a balance between noise and performance. And here's a look at the results. So this is just on idle. You can see on the right side of the screen, I have room temperature. So you can see it went from a little bit warmer in the air temperature than underwater temperature, but you know, it's, it's with less than a degree difference, uh, 0.7, so not a big deal. The dB, it went down a little bit. So, the, so we can see here at idle, there actually is a pretty substantial decrease in temperature, surprisingly. So on the top left graph here, we can see we're looking at, um, we have max temperatures in the dark blue and averages in the light blue. And you can see here that there's actually a pretty considerable decrease in temperatures across the board. I mean, even at idle, we're looking at you know, 15 degrees in some cases. And then you can see on the GPU, we're also getting decreases in the GPU temperature as well. So overall, I mean, even at idle, we're looking at pretty good degree temperature change there. You can see on the right side, I mean, on the graph, none of the temperatures are bad. We're looking at, you know, 40 degrees going down, 48 degrees, for example, going down to 34 degrees. So, I mean, we're going from totally acceptable to just stellar temperatures overall. The second graph here, this is 4K60 YouTube video. So I have this on a second screen and I'm just running it basically for quite a long time here. So these tests were done for 10 minutes before I took my measurements here. So you can see here that again, we have pretty considerable drops in temperatures. This is somewhat similar to the idle temperatures, but there is an improvement overall. Um, same with the uh, GPU as well. So just overall, the case is running cooler. The third test here was doing a full Cinebench run. And again, I did it for 10 minutes. It obviously completes much faster than 10 minutes. And you can see here that there is also a decrease in temperatures. So on the left side here, uh, you know, we're looking at not as much as it was at idle, but we're still looking at two to three degrees overall um, decrease in temperature. On the core temperature, um, the max went down quite a bit, seven degrees overall. So pretty considerable overall. And then the GPU as well was quite a bit cooler. And that's more consistent with just the case in general being cooler. Um, you know, you don't have the CPU inside blowing hot air inside the face, inside the case that's then hopefully being evacuated by the rear fans. Rather, the temperature is going directly out into the radiator and evacuating the case. So if you can see on the right side here on air and water, um, it is possible that you're hitting, that we were hitting some thermal throttling on, you know, TCTL. Uh, we hit thermal throttling or warning around 90 degrees on both cases. Um, however, it just happened, I noticed uh, visually it happened a little bit slower when we were on the water cooler. Um, and then you can see here that overall, a lot of the temperatures are down quite a bit. And you can see on the score there, we actually did see an increase in the Cinebench R23 score on the very bottom right here. We can see a decrease, an increase in the score of about 6% overall. So, and our last result here is a time spy score. So you can see here that the CPU actually does run cooler, uh, quite a bit cooler. You can see here, um, overall, I mean, kind of consistent across the board this is what we're seeing in all cases. We're looking at you know, pretty considerable decrease in temperatures. If you look on the right side for the temperature for the CPU, it is actually bringing down some of the maxes close to thermal throttling down quite a bit. Um, so we're actually getting pretty good numbers over there. You can see on the GPU, actually, interestingly, some of them went up and some of them went down, which is a little bit weird. So the maxes seem to go down, 
but the average seemed to go up. And that could be something to do with just circulating air. You know, when you have the CPU on time spy, it's not going to be as taxed as, for example, Cinebench. And if I don't have a CPU fan inside of the case, there's less circulating air overall, which could result in potentially slightly higher GPU temperatures. We're not looking at much, though. I mean, we're looking at 4 degrees on average, um, you know, 2 degrees and, and uh, 3.4 degrees. So, you know, it's really nothing. However, there is it is noticeable that it is there and the scores across the board do go up you can see on the very bottom right there um, cpu gpu scores and combined scores they go up by a little bit nothing considerable but they are going up so we're definitely not losing scores overall so if you go back and look at all three of these um, one of the most important things for me was decreasing the noise so decreasing the noise while increasing thermal response overall so despite the fact that i'm using the uh, low fan noise or I'm using the low fan noise adapters, which slow down the fans and make them basically, you know, not as potent in terms of cooling effectiveness. I am seeing uh, decreased noise levels overall, or you know, at worst case, kind of similar. With these X3D uh, CPUs, the temperature of the cache is actually very important. You don't want to get that too hot. So for me, I'm actually quite happy with the results here, bringing down the CPU temperatures quite a bit, and uh, especially if you look at the cache across the board. I mean, we're looking at. Um, you know, pretty considerable decrease 